In this video, I'm going to configure an IPsec VPN tunnel using Packet Tracer. I'm using Packet Tracer 7.1.1, but you could do the same lab using Packet Tracer 6.3. You'll just need three 1941 routers, two 2960 series switches, and two PCs, which you can just drag and drop and then connect together. Remember to put the 1941 routers, connect them with crossover cables in Packet Tracer and then you're ready to go. Now I've already configured the interface IP addresses on these routers and I've also got a default route on R1 and R3 pointing towards the ISP router. Now I've put no static routes on the ISP router so we're not able to ping across the network. So the ISP router, the only two networks it knows about, if I open it up and look at the routing table, you'll see that it only knows about its two connected networks. That is, it knows about this network here, 209.165.100.0 and 209.165.200.0 on each interface. So it cannot route to this one network and this three network. So pings across will not work. They will fail. And I'll just delete these really quickly and we'll do it one more time here. So pings across are going to fail. Also a ping from let's say the PC to the ISP will also fail because this router here doesn't know about this three network and this router up here doesn't know about this one network. How we're going to make this work is we're going to create an IPsec VPN tunnel and then these networks will be tunneled across and the ISP router won't even realize it's carrying traffic from a one network to a three network because those IP addresses will be the tunneled IP addresses in the header, a second IP address in the packet headers. Now to make an IPsec VPN tunnel, you need to have the technology or security license on the router. Now R3 already has that security license upgrade, but R1 doesn't. Let's see if we can upgrade it to the security license here. So we can just, I've already checked as you can see here, that it doesn't have the security license. I did a show version command to check that. So now I'll go to global config mode and I'll say license boot module C1900 series routers technology dash package security K9 and then I'll hit enter and then I have to accept the license agreement. So I'll type yes, and that upgrades the license. Then I'll save the configuration, and then reload the router. And then once the router reloads, I can check again to make sure that I now have the security license. I have it in a trial evaluation period, but you'll need the security license if you want to do an IPsec VPN tunnel. So I'll do a show version command here. And you can see there it is, security, security K9 evaluation. So now with the security license enabled, I can go ahead and do an IPsec VPN tunnel. Now, the configurations that I put on R1, R2, and R3, they look like this. Oh, not like that. They look like this. So here are the configurations I put on R1, the ISP router, and R3. And you can see it's just the interfaces are configured. Um, the ISP router, the ISP router just has the interface configured, no static routes. And R3 has a default route pointing towards the ISP. And R1 has a default route pointing towards the ISP. Now I'll post these configurations to the description below the video so you could just copy and paste it into your packet tracer if you want to build this I'll paste those configurations so that you can start out at this point also I'll put in the configuration for setting up the security K9 license so once you have that set up you're ready to go all you got to do is set up to set up the IPsec VPN tunnel is put in these pieces one you're gonna need to set up an access list to permit the traffic or the matching traffic that will go across the tunnel. Two, you're gonna set up your ISACAMP policy. This is phase one and your ISACAMP key. 
This is phase one of the IPsec tunnel. Then you're going to set up your IPsec transform set, which is phase two of the Ike or the the Ike negotiation, the setup of the tunnel process. The IPsec is phase two. Then you're going to create a crypto map to tie it all together and then apply the crypto map to the interface. So there's five basic components. Okay, let's get started. Now, for R1, I'll go to global config mode here. And I'm going to start by pasting in my ACL. Now, my ACL, I have it listed here in my notes. And here it is. I'll just copy that. And I'll paste it in right here. And access list 100, permit, IP, from the 1 network, that's the LAN on the left side, to the 3 network, which is the LAN on the right side on R3. So there's my access list 100. Now I'll just go back into my notes here, switch these around, 3 and 1, so from the 3 network to the 1 network, and then I'll just copy and paste that in to the other router. So now on R3, I'll set up that same access list. When you set up an IPsec VPN tunnel, configurations kind of have to match on either side. Okay, so let's see here. I'll paste that and we'll double check that it's right. Access list 100 permit the 3 network to reach the 1 network. Okay, so now I have access list 100 on either side that permits traffic from this network to reach this network and on this router from this network to reach this network. Okay, so ACLs are done. Now we're going to set up the ISACAMP policy. So for the ISACAMP policy, I'll go back to my notes here, and you can see here, Crypto ISACAMP Policy 10. We're going to use encryption AES, 256-bit key. For authentication, we're going to use a pre-share key and Diffie-Hellman Group 5 for key exchange. So I'll just grab this and I'll copy it. And I'm going to paste that in on either router. Paste. There's my crypto ISA camp policy with encryption, authentication using pre-share keys and Diffie Hellman group. That looks good. And I'll paste that same thing in on the other side. There we go. Next, looking at my notes here, I've got to do the ISACAMP key. The password will be secret key. And then the address is the peer router. So if I'm R1, R3's WAN interface, outside interface, is 209.165.200.1. In other words, when, I'm, when I do this on R1, I want to use the address of the the router on the opposite side of the tunnel, the outside facing interface right here. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'll just grab this and I'll copy it. And then on R1, I'll just paste that in. I'll exit and go back to global config mode and paste it in. There it is. And now on the other router, I'll go in there and exit, and I'll paste it in, and then I'm going to change the address. And then I'll change that address to 100.1, which is the IP address of R1's outside interface. So there's our keys. Now we need the same key, the same password on either side. Crypto, ISACAMP key, secret key, and then the peer router's IP address. So if I'm R3, 209.165.100.1 is this router here, R1, this interface here. All right, so we've set up part one, part two. Now we've got to set up our IPsec transform set, which is phase two. So let's take a look at that. The crypto IPsec transform set, you give it a name. In this case, I gave it the name R1 to R3. And then we're going to use ESP AES encryption, 256-bit, 
key and then ESP SHA HMAC for um, a keyed hash. So we'll do this. I'll just grab this and copy it. And I'll paste that into R1. Paste. And that is R1 to R3. Now I'll paste the same thing into R3, but then I'll change the name so it makes sense. This will be R3 to R1. So the IPsec phase two, we're going to use encapsulating security payload, AES encryption, 256 bit, and ESP, SHA, and HMAC, which stands for keyed hash message authentication code. This provides integrity and authentication. Okay, so we have that done. So now going back to my notes, we've got the IPsec transform set, and now all we need to do is set up our crypto map. Now the crypto map, you have to give it a name. So I give it the name IPsec-map, the number, I gave it the number 10, and then IPsec-isocamp. So this is what we're going to be using in the crypto map. We're going to be using IPsec and ISACAMP. You have to set your peer address of the other router, then perfect forward secrecy, group five, security association, the lifetime. Then you have to set your transform set. So I give it the name of the transform set that I'm using, which I set over here, and then matching addresses that are going to activate the VPN tunnel this match address, and this is access list 100. So this tells it that the access list will be 100. The transform sets R1 to R3 over here. The security association lifetime. Perfect forward secrecy. We're using Diffie-Hellman group five, and then the peer router at the other end of the tunnel. So this works for R1 because 200.1 is at the other end of the tunnel, and our transform set is named this. So this is set up for working for R1. So I'll just copy it and paste it into R1. Now I'll have to go over to R1 though to set this up. So R1 and paste. All right, now that's done. Now notice when it says crypto map, IPsec map 10, and then it says this new crypto map will remain disabled until a peer and a valid access list have been configured. So there's the peer and there's the access list that's been set up. So now I'll go back in here and go into my notes and I'm going to change this slightly. I'll change this to 100 for the opposite and this will be R3 to R1. And now it's set up to go the other way. So I'll copy that and paste it in here on R3. Paste. And there it is. So now we've set up our access list, our ISACAMP policy, our ISACAMP key, our IPsec transform set for phase two of the Ike negotiation process. Phase one basically um, sets up the key authentication and sets up the tunnel. And then phase two sets up the types of encryption that we're going to be setting when we're transforming uh, when we're transferring the data. So phase one sets up the authentication phase and sets up the tunnel. Part two sets up the tunnel for sending the data. We set up the crypto map, which tied it all together, and now all we have to do is apply the crypto map to the interface. So the crypto, uh, the crypto map is named IPsec map. So all we have to do is now go into our interface, interface gigabit zero slash zero, which is the outside facing interface and say crypto map IPsec dash map. And that basically turns on the process or starts the ISACAMP is on. All right, so then on the other side, I'll go to the router and I'll also go into interface gigabit zero slash zero, and it's the same command crypto map ipsec dash map, which is the name I gave it, 
and that turns it on. So now it should be on and it should be working. Now before we couldn't ping across, but now we should be able to ping across. Now what I'll do is I'll just go in here to PCA and open up the command prompt and I'll set up a ping. And we'll just let that ping go for a second here. Now it's going to fail at first. You might have to give it a couple of tries to get it working here in Packet Tracer. It takes a second to get going. Over here on PCC, I'll do the same thing. Ping across 192.168.1.10. You can see I'm getting replies here. And over here, you can see I also got a reply here. Now I'm getting replies. There's the replies. And so it's working. Now remember, ISP has no idea about the one network or the three network, but yet I'm pinging across. Well, how is that? Well, it's easy. What you could do is you can go into the simulation mode here. All right. And in simulation mode, I'll say show none, edit filters, ICMP, and then I'll set up a packet from here to here and then capture forward and we see it hits the router and then it goes across and if we look inside the packet at the inbound PDU details you can see as far as the ISP is concerned this is coming from the 209.165.100.1 address destined for the 209.165.200.1 but what's inside is the ESP header and then the second IP address which is basically encrypted in the tunnel and there is the 1.10 to 3.10 communication. So You can see that's actually what's happening so the ISP doesn't see that that tunneled information and then that gets capture forwarded and sent and it reaches its destination. Woohoo! So pretty cool. So I'll go back to real-time mode here, and, and that's pretty much it. Also, what you can do is we can go into R1 here and Control-C and show crypto IPsec SA for security associations, and you can see what's happening here. Um, show crypto IPsec SA. And we can see here packets encapsulated, packets encrypted, 11, packets decapsulated, packets decrypted, 11. So you can see the packets are being encrypted and decrypted here. And you have more choices here under the show crypto, put a question mark. You can look at IPsec, you can look at our ISACAMP, you can look at our crypto map, we can look at all the settings, but as you can see, it's working. So pretty cool.